Hello, my name is Solitaire and for 20 years I've been trying to make the world a better place and I thought I'd share a few snippets of what I've learned on the way. One of the things which I've learned is how uncomfortable it feels to stand at a crossroads of change. Right now, today, we're at a crossroads. We don't know which way an election is going to go. Could go one way, could go the other. The same as with the coronavirus, with the pandemic that we're facing. How soon are we going to get out of it? How do we work our way out of it? And even great big things like climate change. It feels like we're standing at a crossroads between a future that might be around renewable energy and recovering nature and maybe an outcome that might not be as good. Environmental destruction, crisis, emergency. Standing at crossroads, crossroads have always been a really big part of human history. All through different cultures and different eras, crossroads have been where you buried, executed people, or where you put a statue of a god or goddess. People used to make offerings at crossroads. And in our novels and movies, we use crossroads as places where spies might meet, or Gandalf and Lord of the Rings in Moria deciding which route is going to take the company out of danger. Now, I did a lot of research into Crossroads for my book, The Happy Hero, um, and what I discovered is that Crossroads also appear in two different fields, psychology and sociology. The, the, the psychology, the crisis of individual crisis, Crossroads that we have in our individual crisis, there's something called the crisis curve around how crisis happens in our own life and then we hit this point of no return and it's called the crisis crossroads. That's when perhaps you're facing an addiction or a health crisis or a crisis in your relationship. You hit a point where you can't go any further. And the same happens in societies. You see this all through history, where enough change happens in the society, either war or technological change or cultural difference change, and eventually a society hits a crossroads, also called the crisis crossroads. And very few people have put these two things together, but actually it turns out the map of crisis and of crossroads is the same for us as individuals or for all of us as society. And this is how it happens. Slowly problems build up. Sometimes you don't even notice them. The ways of doing things, you do the things you've always done and they don't have the right outcome. Slowly things get worse and the out turn, outside and internal pressures build up until you hit a point of no return. Well, actually continuing the way that you were going is no longer possible, either in your own life because of your relationship or your addiction or other crisis financial, you can no longer continue the way you're going or culturally in your society, technology, cultural change, external factors like war or aggressors mean that you can no longer continue the way you're going. When you hit this crisis point, when you hit this crisis crossroads, a variety of things happen. One is you become very open to suggestion. We hate standing at crisis, the lack of resolution. We want the story to end. We want to know whether good or bad. We want to know the outcome. We become so anxious at the lack of clarity that we're open to any answer, any solution, good or bad. We become actually very suggestible when we're standing at crisis. And the other thing that happens at crisis in this crisis crossroads is we become very inventive. We actually start to see solutions, see outcomes, see ideas that perhaps we hadn't seen before. Those two things happen at the same time. And then one of three things happen. Either one, things go down. The bad outcomes happen. We take the bad pathway out of crisis. We try to keep doing what would always been done and there's a negative outcome. And on something like climate change, that would be continuing the way that we're going with fossil fuels, continuing the way we're going with food and with travel. And eventually you, you hit a point where, you can't, where the, the tip happens and you're actually in full scale, step, full scale disaster. The other thing that happens when you come out of crossroads is perhaps you take a different path, which is called the maladaptation path. So maladaptations, if you're an individual in crisis, is you maladapt to a crisis of drinking and instead you start taking drugs or you're smoking and perhaps you start taking throat sweets. So you try to keep things going, you try to eke things out. In climate change, that might be geoengineering. Hey, we can keep using all of the oil 
and we'll just try to suck the, the carbon out of the atmosphere. So you try to keep the way your life was, but you maladapt to the challenge which you can't do anything about. And you still hit disaster, it just takes a little bit longer. There's a third pathway out of every crisis, be that for an individual or for a whole culture, and that's upwards, where you do the things which actually solve the problem that caused the crisis in the first place. You work with others, you invent, you're creative, you find solutions that actually create a life or a society better than the ones that you started with. Most clearly, this is with climate change, the fact that renewable energy solves so many other problems um, than just climate change. It's something which the, the three, million pe three billion people who don't have access to energy right now can get access to modern energy with renewables. It solves poverty, it, it helps equality, it cleans our air, it, um, it's cheaper. So you have all of these benefits of actually solving the problem. So what people always ask me when I'm talking about this is, well, how what do you do? How do you decide? Um, how do you get out of the crossroads? How do you make sure you take the right road? And from everything which I've looked at, from the psychology of individual crisis to the sociology of societal crisis, is that there's only one thing, and it's not technology, and it's not politics, and it's not culture, and it's not the media. There's only one thing that guarantees you've come out as an individual or as a society, and that's by facing the right way. Basically, talking about, thinking about, envisaging that positive path. Because it turns out we human beings aren't really that complicated and we end up walking the way we're facing. If all we do is talk about crisis and disaster, if all we do is focus on the negative, if all we do is, if we're an addict, is imagine our children being taken away, if we're an addict, imagining dying, if all we do is focus on that negative, if we're incapable of articulating the positive outcome, then we will get the negative outcome. It's been called many different things. It's been called reflexivity. It's been called the Thomas theorem. It's been called self-fulfilling prophecies. But basically, as human beings, we tend to get what we focus on. Not what we wish for, but what we focus on. Because we tend to make our mindsets reality. So when it comes to something like climate change, what that means is we all have to be able to articulate and envision a world of seven to ten healthy, free, educated human beings thriving on a planet that is recovering. It took me a long time to be able to say that. Seven to ten billion human beings, healthy, free, educated, thriving in a natural world in the rest of nature that is recovering and can sustain them. But if we can articulate that, if we can envision it, if we can see it, if we know what it looks like and if we want it enough, then we'll be facing the right way. And when it comes to the future, you've got to face into it, not walk into it backwards. So that's all I wanted to say. I've got other of these planned. I've got other insights into how people think, into how change happens, into examples that I've seen that have worked that haven't worked. But it, this is my first little mini vlog about how to change the world.